Hey there, I'm Chad Barringer. I'm the business librarian at Ohio University Libraries. I have a whole class of students working on analyzing the supermarket and grocery retailing industry. And unfortunately, I can't be there to meet with them because, well, not unfortunate. I'm on vacation and I'm in Florida. So sorry about that. But what follows here is my six top tips for researching the, the supermarket and grocery retailing industry. You'll have six databases here that are key and essential in looking at this industry. So what follows here is a about a 14 or 15 minute demonstration. Sorry, it's a little bit long, but it's um, it's pretty comprehensive. So once you do this, you'll definitely know how to research the supermarket and grocery store retailing industry. So here you go. So the first in my top six picks for grocery and supermarket industry research is the S&P Standard Poor's Capital IQ Industry Surveys. These are updated every six months. You can see they cover things like how the industry operates. You have things like um, a sector overview. You get trends in the industry. You get key ratios and statistics. You get, if you look at the industry overview here, we get nice charts and graphs and that sort of thing. Also, I should note that all the data that is within here, you get profit ratios for your companies. All this data here is downloadable here to Excel if you click on the downloadable company data. So a great source here to do that. You can also click the PDF here if you want to print the whole thing out in, in one big document. Uh, to find these reports, once you get to Standard & Poor's Net Advantage on the home page here, all you're going to do is click on under Industry Surveys. Here we have the Food and Staples Retailing. That's what they call that instead of the um, the uh, supermarket and groceries like some other reports called it. Just uh, select Food and Staples Retailing. Hit the arrow there and that will take you to the Food and Staples Retailing uh, industry survey here in Standard & Poor's Net Advantage. Again, a great resource, updated every six months, and okay. ideal for people who are researching the supermarket and grocery um, industry. The second database in my list here is IBIS World. And if you just search for grocery in IBIS World, you can see you get stuff for online grocery sales, grocery wholesaling, and here we have supermarkets and grocery stores in the U.S. These are great reports, though I do caution you that students tend to over rely on these reports. So definitely don't let IBIS World write your whole paper or do your whole project for you. You can see it does give you some nice graphical detail. You can see there's an industry outlook. You get an industry at a glance, which gives you a nice kind of um, um, nice graphical interface here to see how the industry is doing and that sort of thing. You get market share for some of the major companies. You get operating conditions in the company and things like that. So here we have products and markets, including major markets, supply chain, and you get an industry outlook to tell you how the industry is doing, uh, that sort of thing. So a great tool to get started with. Uh, definitely don't let this uh, be the end all be all of your research. That's why I'm showing you uh, six tools here, not just one. But IBIS World is definitely one to consider, particularly if you know nothing about the industry. It's a great place to get started. The information found in Hoover's, which actually comes from the, the Dun & Bradstreet First Research Database, is a great complement to IBIS World and can actually prevent from, uh, you from overusing the IBIS World content. So here we have the grocery stores and supermarkets content here in Hoover's, which is based off the, um, the first research database. And you can see you get industry growth rating, you get all kinds of industry financial information, industry forecast, and all these things are clickable here. So you can click on trends and opportunities here, for example, and get all kinds of good information uh, to go along with your project. So a great way to, to look at that kind of stuff. You also can see that there's a company's list here. And because we're in Hoover's, which is primarily a company database, all of these uh, companies are clickable within here, so you can go and click and find more information about the companies uh, within that particular industry. So to get this information in Hoover's, uh, basically all you have to do from the, from the Hoover's homepage is you can change the categories to industries and then just type in grocery and see what comes up here. Well, here we have especially food stores, grocery stores, and supermarkets, and that's how you get to uh, these reports. If you want to, you can also go back to the All Industries tab here and this will allow you to actually browse Hoover's industries to see what other relevant industries uh, might be available to you within, within this database. So our fourth tool is called Passport, and the advantage of Passport over some of the other resources that we've looked at before is that Passport uh, does a lot of content for not only a, the U.S. scale, but also the global scale and global market as well. So it's a great tool to look at the grocery and supermarket industries in other countries. You know, whereas IBIS World and First Research uh, primarily and, and S&P primarily focus on the U.S., 
uh, this does offer some global coverage here. So what you can do is under uh, to get to that content, go to Find Analysis, and here we're going to choose our industry. You can go up here and type in your keyword if you want to, but I actually prefer you to start browsing first to see what might, kind of content you might have. So if we choose our industry here, and within this section, they actually put grocery store and, and, and supermarkets under retailing. So we click on retailing there. Now we can ch choose geography here, and let's just say we're primarily interested in, uh, let's look at Western Europe, and let's do maybe Germany here. And then we'll click go. This will take us to a list of search results here. And here within our list, we, here, we see, here we have grocery retailers in Germany. Pretty cool. And we also will have com uh, company profiles and that sort of thing of some of the companies in the country. Here we have an overview of retailing in Germany, so the broader perspective there. All right, so if we look at grocery retailers in Germany, this takes us to uh, the page here where we have headlines, trends, um, prospects in the industry, um, competitive landscape, things like that. And then at the very, very end, we'll have all kinds of uh, category data. Let me scroll down past the pictures here, looking at sales, competential growth rate, and that sort of thing. So, so now that we know that this is called grocery retailers in Germany, you might go up here and type in grocery retailers in, and you can say, you know, France, right? You can say in Belgium, right? So we have all this information for global coverage there. So really cool, okay? Another way to get this information, if you wanna get multiple companies or countries at the same time to compare them, is go back under industries here, and here is retailing. And this takes us to the retailing homepage here. And so what you can do is go into this search tree and here is, uh, let's do retailing as the category and just click go. This is gonna take us into this search tree. And the reason we're doing this is that it will take us into um, a place where we can drill down and look at different aspects of retailing by different geographies. When your results uh, load, you'll see that retailing has been selected, but you might wanna scroll down just a little bit to see where that is and see if there's other relevant information down here in the list. So here we have store-based retailing, and here we have grocery retailers, all right, pretty cool. And let's just look at store-based retailing as well. And then now we're satisfied with that, we can choose geographies. We'll do now choose geographies here. And once it loads, let's say we're looking at Western Europe, we can select Western Europe there and then go in and choose whatever countries we want. Okay, and now we're happy with that. If we scroll down now, we can either see, click see data now or run search. Uh, run search will give us um, uh, statistics and analysis there. If you just want statistics, you can click on statistics or we can click on things like brand shares or or things like that. So if we click on, say, for example, market sizes, this will give us the market size uh, for each country that we selected for uh, the various uh, retailing, store-based retailing, and grocery retailers. Again, if you want this information, you can download this to Excel uh, or a PDF, that sort of thing. So great way to look at that. If you want to, you can click on analysis. And this will, I want to again find uh, those reports that talk about you know retailing in your particular country or if you go back to your result list, you can find all the reports. Here's a retailing in Belgium, Denmark, grocery retailers in Greece, Germany, uh, things like that. So if you like that sort of stuff and you just want the reports, you can go down and click on country reports. And here's our reports there. If you want to uh, get rid of that, you can go back and look at, uh, if you wanna look at com uh, company profiles in those areas, here are company profiles. And this will bring up company profiles, including, in many cases, SWOT analyses of some of the companies uh, in those areas. And so here we have, for example, there's your Aldi group in Belgium um, or in, in Germany. And here we basically different supermarkets and grocery stores and, and key retailers in those areas. So those are some quick ways to, to use Passport for this project. A great way to get uh, global coverage um, in addition to uh, U.S. coverage of the, of the, of the industry in, in various markets.
While the previous four reports, or four databases, have looked at reports mainly covering the broad industry perspective, Mintel actually does a little uh, more research into the consumer mindset and what consumers think about the about why they do why they shop at particular grocery stores and things like that. So Mintel does market research on consumer needs, consumer uh, consumer demand. Uh, that sort of thing. So you can see I'm, I've found the market drivers here for grocery retailing in the U.S. You can see it covers, you know, all kinds of um, um, trends, market size and forecast, things like that. It covers things like uh, social media in grocery stores, marketing strategies, attitudes towards online grocery shopping, uh, things like that. Mintel is pretty easy to use. All you have to do once you get here is if we're just looking for grocery, you can see it's going to bring up uh, grocery retailing. Uh, you might also try for uh, supermarket and see if that brings up anything. Uh, looks like groceries probably. Here's supermarket retailing in Ireland, I guess. Um, but if you, it looks like grocery is probably your best bet uh, for for this particular uh, resource here. So here's grocery grocery retail in the U.S. You can also browse uh, by category here. So here we have there's a retail section down here if you wanted to browse. Um, by overall general uh, theme or sector or demographic um, that you're looking at reaching. So um, a great way to find additional information about, uh, about the, the retail space and things like that. In addition to that, you can kind of find, uh, here's convenience store food service, right? So we searched for grocery, didn't find that. But here is a report for convenience store food service, which would probably be a competitor of grocery stores. Uh, likewise, if we go back and see, um, there is a, they call it uh, mass merchandisers. Um, so that would be your Walmarts, your, your big super targets, uh, places like that. So, and again, if you wanted to, you can search for grocery and then click here, or you just click here to search all the reports in grocery there that would bring up uh, some of those other reports there. So here we have the food drink consumer coming soon, grocery pricing promotion, uh, things like that. So let's looks like some some decent content here for you in looking at the grocery market from a more consumer perspective than the other resources here in Mintel. The last but certainly not least database I'd encourage you to look at is Business Source Complete. And this is where you can kind of use uh, Business Source Complete to fill in some of the gaps of your research, to find additional articles about your, your topic and that sort of thing. So if we go up here, I'm not going to start here first because it's not my first pick. It's more like my fifth or sixth pick because I think you need to have a good knowledge of the industry before you start slapping in keyword terms here. But if you just want to type in grocery, uh, here we search for grocery. I didn't even get halfway there. And here we have grocery stores or supermarkets, which is kind of what we're looking at, right? So pretty good. We find 59,000 results there. Uh, you can see we have stuff from like the Journal of Marketing. We've got stuff from Fast Company, uh, things like that. What I would encourage you to do, even if you do a search just as simple as grocery stores or supermarkets, is go down and limit this to trade publications. What this will do, it'll get rid of that journal of marketing, it'll get rid of Fast Company. And so here we have articles from Progressive Grocer. Okay, we have articles from Chain Store Age. Okay, so pretty cool. Uh, these are, 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 are articles written by people in that industry for people in that industry. Okay, so a great way to get content there. Now, if you want to, you can go up here and say, all right, let's limit that down um, to maybe 2013 to 2015 and look for... Uh, we're just basically browsing articles and trade publications from the past couple of years about um, about the industry. So a great way to kind of get a good uh, idea of what's going on in the industry from the industry perspective, right? So if we look at some, for example, let's go and look at this first article, and we'll look at um, Progressive Grocer here just by clicking on the source link. So this tells us it features articles, in-store business, non-foods business, commentary, legislation, technology, produce, and news of note aimed at executives and managers in the retail supermarket business. If anyone's going to know what it's like to, to, to work, to do business in, to uh, the customer mindset, that sort of thing, it's, it's the authors of Progressive Grocer. They're writing from the industry perspective and their audience is people in that industry. So a great way to look at that kind of content. Uh, if you want to, you can go up and just browse by issue. So if you say, let's look at the latest issue, 
this will take you in to kind of show you what's going on in you know the latest April issue of Progressive Grocer uh, here in your virtual newsstand, so to speak. So again, Business Source Complete is a great tool to look for those trade publications that will be very useful in complementing uh, and adding additional information to your reports that you find in the other uh, market research and industry research databases. Hope this video helped you. Should you need more help, look for the contact link on the business blog. I'll be glad to help you any way I can. Take care. Have a great day, and I'll see you when I get back from Florida. Bye now.